myself munraj naidu assistant professor department of uh, computer science and engineering working at uh, institute of aeronautical engineering adab so in this video i am going to discuss about uh, classical problems of uh, synchronization so already in the previous video i discussed what are the semaphores and what are the various uh, solutions for that uh, process synchronization so let's look into this classical problems of uh, synchronization these are the various classical problems of synchronization like a uh, bounded buffer problem then readers and writers problem third one dining philosophers problem and next concept is a uh, monitors so this bounded buffer problem is also called as a producer consumer problem so let's uh, look into this uh, classical problems of synchronization introduction uh, part so whatever the classical problems of synchronization i have discussed here those are all examples of a large class of concurrency control problems so what does it mean concurrency control so whenever there is some common data for that particular data more number of processes are able to access that particular data so how the synchronization is done between these processes to access that particular data so the deals about these uh, classical problems of uh, synchronization so whatever the solutions to the problems we are provided so here there are number of uh, uh, mechanisms to solve those problems but here according to the operating systems in case of process synchronization here we can use a uh, semaphores for synchronization because there is a traditional way to present uh, uh, each and every solution for uh, problems so however the actual implementations of these uh, solutions could use the mutex locks in place of uh, binary semaphores so we know we have two categories of uh, semaphores counting semaphores and uh, binary semaphores so these problems are used for testing nearly every newly proposed synchronization schemes so what are the various problems of synchronization you know producer consumer problem that is sometimes called as a bounded buffer problem second one is dining philosophers problem third one uh, readers uh, writers problem so these are considered as a classical problems of synchronization see let's uh, coming to this uh, bounded buffer which is also called as a producer consumer problem so this particular problem is generalized in terms of uh, producer consumer problem so however the solution for this bounded buffer problem that is the solution to this problem is creating two counting uh, semaphores those are full and uh, empty so these are the two counting semaphores uh, like full and empty to keep track of current number of full as well as the empty buffers uh, respectively so according to this producer consumer problem producers produce a product and consumers consume the product but both use of one of the containers each time so bounded buffer or uh, producer consumer uh, problem so the solution for this particular problem is creating two binary semaphores two counting semaphores those counting semaphores are full and uh, empty so we need to identify the keep track of current number of full and empty buffers see according to the bounded buffer uh, problem we have n number of uh, buffers each can hold uh, only one item at a time here we can use the semaphore mutex which is initialized to the value 1 and semaphore full which is initialized to value 0 semaphore empty which is uh, initialized to value n so these are the prerequisites so what is the structure of the producer process what is the structure of the producer process so if you take uh, any n number of uh, processes for this particular process uh, uh, synchronization so this is a, a common structure for a producer process do produce an item in the next point 
next process produce an item in the next process so we are using the weight mt and weight of uh, mutex so this uh, add the item to the buffer so you know in case of uh, producer consumer uh, problem right so whenever any particular uh, goods are consumed then automatically the producer transmits goods to the consumer so add the items to the buffer then is the with the help of uh, you know semaphore is depends on two variables uh, weight and uh, signal so in case of uh, produce an item here we can use the uh, weight whereas consume the item here we can use the signal of mutex and signal of uh, full so this is the structure of the producer process similarly what is the structure of the consumer process see in case of consumer process first of all do weight of uh, full so it represents whether that particular uh, consumer process is full or not then weight mutex so what happens here each and every time remove an item from the buffer to the next pointer then consume the item in the next pointer that is represented with signal of uh, mutex and signal of uh, empty so this is the structure of the consumer process so that represents that uh, bounded buffer or we can call it as a producer consumer problem then coming to the next problem readers writers problem readers writers problem so this is a uh, very simple according to the uh, students uh, perspective a readers writers uh, problem so consider a situation where we have a common file shared between many people so that represents that whenever some group of students may access the common database we can call this common shared data right now here we have to choose who is the admin for that particular data so that means you know basically the admin is having the full rights to that particular uh, data right whereas whoever the uh, we can call as a clients or viewers right so those are only a limited access uh, rights so let us see this readers writers problem if one of the people tries to editing the file then no other person should be reading or writing at the same time right so some there exists some common uh, data right so these are all the users who use that particular uh, file right so among those users one particular user definitely having the full rights you can call as a admin to that particular uh, data so if one of the people among the various uh, uh, guys who are trying to access that particular uh, data tries to editing that particular file no other person should be reading or writing at the same time otherwise uh, changes will not be visible to the editor so however if some person is reading the file then others may read it at the same time so for uh, reading purpose it will access uh, both the rights at a time whereas in case of operating system we call the situation as a, a readers writers problem readers writers problem what is the readers writers problem statement if one of the people tries editing the file then no other person should be read or writing at the same time so let us take any simple real time application whenever any particular uh, banking application is under uh, maintenance in the sense the banking admin can do some modifications in the existing uh, site then automatically no account holder may access that particular banking site so that's why we uh, uh, we just uh, go through that particular message uh, sorry for inconvenience the banking site is under maintenance uh, up to this particular time to this particular time like that right so that is a readers writers uh, problem so what are the various uh, problem parameters regarding this readers writers problem see here one set of data is shared among number of processors according to the operating system this is shared data so that particular data is shared between number of processors so we know p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 processors so once 
a writer is ready that means each and every process may be acts as either reader or a writer depends upon the requirement right so once the writer is ready then it performs its write operation so at that time only one writer may write at a time right so if any other process is in the writing mode no other process can read it if any one of the process is writing then no other process can read it then another parameter if at least one reader is reading no other process can write if at least one reader is uh, reading then there is no chance to modify the particular file that is no other process can write and last parameter readers may not write and only read that is you know basically some access rights are uh, limited to the readers so these are the various problem parameters uh, related to the readers writers uh, problem then how we need to provide the solution to this readers writers problem right so first criteria is the solution when reader has the priority over writer that is very important when reader has the priority over the writer so here the priority means no root reader should wait if the share is currently opened for reading so that means the reader has the highest priority when compared to the writer because already someone reads that particular uh, file then there is no chance for a writer to update that particular file so here the priority means uh, no reader should wait if the share is uh, currently opened for the reading so here we are using the three variables uh, one is a mutex another one is write another one is a read count to implement the solution right so you know from the introduction part only already we discussed that these classical problems or uh, the solutions for this classical problems are implemented with the help of the semaphores so semaphore mutex and write so the semaphore mutex is used to ensure mutual exclusion when read count is uh, updated so that is whenever any reader enters or exit from the critical section and semaphore write is used by both readers as well as the writers then next one is int read count so here the read count tells the number of uh, processes performing read in the critical section so you know initially that is the zero so read count tells the number of processes performing read in the critical section so what are the various uh, functions for this particular uh, semaphore you know wait and signal these are the two operations so here the wait represents decrements the semaphore value whereas signal which increments the semaphore value then writer process writer process right see basically we have uh, uh, both uh, writer as well as the readers process so initially the writer requests the entry to critical section writer request for the critical section that means uh, he wants to write something right so whenever the system allows the writer that is uh, represents uh, with the help of the wait signal so it gives a true value it enters and performs the write right so that is simply say that if uh, the writer updates that particular file right so once the work is completed automatically the writer leaves the critical section so if it is not allowed it keeps on waiting definitely because some other readers are read that particular file finally after work is uh, completion it exits the critical section so this is the syntax for writer process do writer request for a critical section that is represented uh, with the help of wait of wrt then it performs the write operation and leaves the critical section so that is signal of wait so that represents the writer process similarly reader process see this particular reader requests the entry to critical section initially the reader requests the entry to the critical section then it checks that if it is allowed the reader to enter into its critical section then automatically you know more number of uh, readers may ready to access that particular file so what happens it increments the count of number of readers inside the critical section so one by one one by one one by one automatically it increments the count for number of uh, readers inside the critical section 
For example, let us take uh, any one particular process or a reader. If this is a reader is the first reader entering, then it locks the right semaphore. Then it locks the right semaphore to restrict the entry of our writers if any reader is uh, inside. If any reader is uh, inside, then automatically it locks that particular uh, right semaphore. After that, signals mutex as any other reader is allowed to enter while others are already reading. Right, already some processes are accessing the same uh, common shared data. At that time, some more readers are which are ready to enter into that particular uh, critical section to access that particular data. So after performing the reading operation, it exits the control section. Right, it exits the control section. That means according to the uh, readers, the work is uh, completed. So when exiting, it checks if no more reader is a uh, inside if no more reason is inside then automatically it signals the semaphore right as now writer can enter the critical section so we know the basic condition if any reader is there in the critical section then no other writer uh, enter into its critical section right so if not allowed for the writers uh, it keeps on waiting it keeps on waiting it keeps on waiting so this is represented uh, like this this is the structure of the uh, reader process. See, this is the structure of uh, the reader process. Initially, weight of mutex, then read count is uh, incremented by 1 by 1. If it reaches to the 1, if read count equals to 1, then uh, weight that particular semaphore. Then automatically, signal of uh, mutex, it represents the reading is uh, performed. Then automatically, Weight mutex, the read count is uh, decremented by 1. If read count equals to 0, signal of uh, weight. So, this is the uh, uh, reader's process. Reader's process. So, for this reader's writer's uh, problem, there are number of uh, variations. Right? So, let us take first variation. What is that first variation here? No reader kept waiting unless writer has permission to use the shared object. Because readers are more right so more number of readers are ready to accept that particular common shared file so no reader kept waiting unless writer has permission to use the shared object then second variation is uh, once writer is ready once writer is uh, ready it performs uh, right as early as possible because it allows the writer what happens if any one writer is allowed then no other reader entered into its uh, critical section so it's time for writer to perform some writing operations so these two variations may have the starvation which leads to even more variations so what is the problem we have faced that is solved on some systems by using the kernel providing reader writer locks how it is uh, provided by the reader writer locks so that represents the Readers, writers problem. Readers, writers problem. Then next one, next classical problem of synchronization, that is a dining philosopher's problem. Dining philosopher's problem. So this is a very interesting. So the dining philosopher's problem states that uh, K philosophers, let us take uh, K number of philosophers, seated around a circular uh, table as per this uh, uh, pictorial representation see this is the this is the circular table this is the circular table right so those number of philosophers seated around a circular table with uh, one chopstick between each pair of philosophers see this is the chopstick the red mark which represents the those are the chopsticks so one chopstick between each pair of philosophers so there is only one chopstick between each uh, philosopher what happens here? A philosopher may eat if he can pick up the two chopsticks adjacent to him. That means both left as well as the right. Right, because here they need to uh, serve the food as less like a noodles. So one chopstick may be picked up by any one of its adjacent followers, uh, but not both. So that is a, a dining philosopher's problem. So how to solve this particular dining philosopher's problem? You know, using the Semaphore concept, uh, semaphore solution to the dining philosopher problem that is represented here. See, each and every philosopher is represented uh, by this particular uh, code, right? So, what is the structure of the 
philosopher the structure of philosopher is weight chopstick of i here the condition is whenever each and every philosopher gets the two chopsticks in the sense both right as well as the left then only he is able to eat right so do weight of chopstick of that particular philosopher weight chopstick i plus 1 modulo 5 then if he gets the two chopsticks both left and right then automatically he starts to eat similarly signal of chopstick that means after completion of its work just it get down that particular uh, chopstick that is signal of chopstick signal of chopstick of i plus 1 modulo 5 so then what happens uh, no other uh, chopstick is free so another work of this particular philosopher is uh, only thinking so eating thinking hurry so this is the a structure of the each and every philosophers in case of dining philosophers problem see these are the three states of uh, philosopher one is uh, thinking second one is hungry third one is uh, eating right so here uh, there are two semaphores you know mutex as well as the semaphore array for the philosophers so here we are using the two semaphores one is a uh, mutex uh, another one is a uh, semaphore array for the philosophers so what is the purpose of mutex mutex is used such that uh, no two philosophers may access the pickup or put down at the same time mutex is used such that no two philosophers may access the pickup or put down at the same time because there is a, a less number of uh, folks right so no two philosophers uh, access the pickup or put down at the same time because uh, for example i want to take my left hand side uh, chopstick but my left hand side chopstick is acts as a right hand side chopstick of the my neighboring my left side neighboring philosopher so that is mutex is used such that no two philosophers may access the pickup or put down at the same time similarly the semaphore array which is used to control the behavior of each and every philosopher right so there are some uh, deadlocks occurs due to the uh, logical errors so what are the various problems with uh, semaphores one is uh, incorrect use of semaphore operations what are those incorrect use of semaphore operations see here signal of mutex and weight of uh, mutex weight of mutex and weight of uh, mutex omitting of weight of mutex or signal of mutex or both right so here the problem is deadlocks as well as the starvation so we will describe uh, later what is meant by deadlock and what are the various methods for uh, handling deadlocks so that deals about that uh, classical problems of uh, synchronization so we have three problems regarding the process synchronization one is a bounded buffer or raiders uh, bounded buffer problem or producer consumer problem second one is a raiders raiders problem third one is a dining philosophers problem then coming to the next concept uh, monitors we know monitor is one of the ways to achieve process synchronization monitor is one of the way to achieve process uh, synchronization because the monitors are supported by the programming languages to achieve mutual exclusion between the processes monitors are supported by any programming languages to achieve mutual exclusion between the processes let us take a simple example a java synchronized methods java synchronized methods like java provides a weight as well as a notify constructs right so coming to this monitors in process synchronization let us take a it's a collection of conditional variables and procedures combined together in a special kind of a module in a special kind of module or a package see the processes running outside the monitor can't access the internal variable of the monitor but can call procedures of the monitor so which means that only one process at a time can execute code inside of the monitors only one process at a time can execute code inside of the monitors so uh, like if say uh, java programming like uh, so java provides both weight as well as a notify uh, uh, constructs uh, here what happens only one process at a time can execute code inside the monitors see this is the syntax for monitors right so monitor uh, demo 
So that represents that uh, name of the monitor. There is a name, monitor, and uh, monitor name. So we need to represent the variables as well as the conditional uh, variables. So the procedures for each and every uh, process P1, procedure for P1, procedure for P2, and so on. Right. So here uh, the conditional variables. Uh, you know the two different operations are performed. Two different operations are performed on the conditional variables of the monitor. Right. So those two different uh, operations uh, are like uh, weight and signal. So how these two different operations are performed on the uh, monitors on any particular conditional variable. See x dot uh, weight and uh, x dot uh, signal. So x dot weight which represents a process that invokes the operation which is suspended until x dot signal is reached. Similarly x dot signal which resumes one of the processes that invoked x dot weight. But if no x dot weight on the variable then it has no effect on that particular variable. So we have two conditional uh, variables uh, here that is a condition x comma y so simply we need to declare those uh, variables then coming to the schematic view of a monitor schematic view of a monitor see as per the synchronization process synchronization uh, uh, concept uh, so this particular uh, monitors how these monitors are existing in uh, process synchronization see you know this is the shared data right so these are the various uh, operations and these are the various uh, entry queues. So this represents the schematic view of a monitor which means that how the particular shared data which is shared to the more number of processes uh, at a time and what are the various operations you are going to perform on that particular uh, shared data. Right? See at the bottom to top uh, initialization code operations shared data and uh, entry queue. Now monitor with the condition variables, monitor with condition variables. See you know the queues are associated with uh, these two conditional variables uh, x and y conditions. See the shared data that is uh, some data which belongs to the x and some data belongs to the y. So similarly this uh, monitors with conditional variables which uh, consists of monitors with uh, condition variables like this entry queue, entry queue and this is the shared data. Then the conditional variable choices. If any one of the process P which invokes x dot signal with the Q in x dot weight state. So what should happen next? If the particular Q is resumed, then P must wait. Right. So this is a condition variable choices. Here we have number of options include one is a Signal and wait, second one is signal and continue. Let us take these two processes P and Q, right? So P waits until the Q leaves the monitor or P waits for another condition. So that is simply we can call as a signal and wait. Similarly, signal and continue, right? So then we can call as a latest, sorry, the later process that is a Q waits until P leaves the monitor or waits for another condition. So here these two options like signal and wait, signal and uh, continue both have uh, some advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, that is represented like a language implementer can uh, decide. So what are the pros as well as the, what are the cons of those uh, two options. So here the monitor is implemented in concurrent uh, Pascal compromise that is uh, the first process there is a P executing signals immediately leaves the monitor then automatically the next process that is the Q is uh, resumed. So here the implemented in other languages uh, such as C sharp as well as the Java. So condition variable choices uh, that is uh, represented with the help of some of the uh, programming uh, languages for this particular uh, monitors. Then what are the various uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, monitors? So we know these monitors play a very important role in uh, process uh, synchronization. So monitors have the advantage of making parallel programming easier. Parallel programming easier. Multiple users can access the same shared data at a time. And less error prone than using the techniques such as uh, semaphores.
right so monitors have the advantage of making parallel programming easier then disadvantage is uh, monitors have to be implemented as part of the programming language so that is a drawback because uh, each and every time these monitors uh, implementation is uh, tied with that particular programming language because it is a part of programming language then whatever the compilers you are using the particular compilers must generate code for the monitors so what happens uh, whenever the compiler generates the code for monitors this gives the compilers additional burden of having to know what operating system facilities are available to control access to control access to the critical sections in concurrent uh, processes concurrent uh, processes so this is also another uh, disadvantage and then some languages that do not support uh, monitors like uh, java c sharp visual vb and uh, Ada and uh, concurrent uh, Euclid. So these are the languages which uh, uh, doesn't support the monitors uh, concept. So these are the advantages and uh, disadvantages of uh, monitors. So this is a uh, classical problems of uh, synchronization. So in this video already we discussed that what are the various uh, classical problems of uh, synchronization. What is meant by uh, bounded buffer problem or producer consumer problem and uh, how we represent a radius riders problem and what is a, a solution for the radius riders problem and uh, what is meant by dining philosophers problem how we need to provide the solution for that uh, dining philosophers problem and monitors what is main my monitor what are the various operations of monitor monitors with uh, conditional variables and uh, finally what are the pros and cons of uh, monitors so monitors it also is a part of process uh, synchronization right Okay, I hope you uh, understand. So, thank you. So, we will meet in the next video. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.